don't take time to look at it through other people's eyes. Take some time and reflect on what you believe in your soul. Cause that is the key to life. You gotta let the negativity go. Welcome to What the Fox Podcast with your two hosts, Lindsay Fox and Amber Ross. Before we get started today, Lindsay and I want to remind you that What the Fox is supported by, sponsored by rather, Therapy Appointment. Therapy Appointment is a practical tool for starting, growing, and managing your practice built for therapists by therapists. And we are thrilled today to get to welcome another guest host. Lindsay, would you like to introduce him for us? I would love to. We are so excited to have Logan Cohen join us. Y'all might be most familiar with him from whatever social media platform you might join. I think it's kind of funny because when uh, Logan, I asked Logan to kind of share a little bit about himself. um, The the last tidbit on the list was like, well, I guess nowadays people would say I'm a social media influencer. (laughs) (laughs) But that's not actually his uh, his official trade. He's actually a therapist, which is why, you know, honestly, he's a great fit for this podcast. So Healing Humanity 777 is what he's known for on like TikTok and Instagram. So you might know that name a little bit better than his first name. <laughs> but Logan, we are so glad to have you here on What the Fox. Um, we'd love to hear a little bit more about like, who are you? Who's Logan? What else is there other than Healing Humanity 777? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, I'm, um, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of like the, the dude in the big Lebowski right now. I'm just a dude, <laughs> man. Um, I, I was at a, a, a concert in, in where I live the other day at a small venue and um, it was seeing uh, the, the 25th or 30th anniversary of um, uh, Dark Side of the no, it's 50th anniversary of Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd album, and there was a band playing the whole album from beginning to end. And someone recognized me, and it's like this is just starting to happen. Someone recognized me in the venue and was like, oh, kind of looking at me. And there's a part of me that's like, oh my gosh, like, there were people looking at me, and like, I ran into some. And, Totally. It was, you know, making people awkward. And they were like, hi, do you do this on social media? And they were kind of like wide eyed. And, and it was kind of you know, weird for, for me at first. And I was just like, hi, I'm, I'm Logan and shook up, you know, shook their hand. And I was like, oh, hi, I didn't, it's, yeah. you know, I'm just a dude, man. Um, <laughs> um, a real person. I'm a, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, I'm a dad. I'm a husband. Um, you know, I'd say uh, primarily I practice as a therapist. Um, this is what I've always done. The only thing that I've trained to do professionally and you know, what, what I've always focused on really from the job. Um, I've studied marriage and family therapy specifically and um, specialize in family systems theory. I, I supervise for the American Association of Marriage and Family Therapy um, and then have some additional certifications in trauma oriented work. Um, I have a, a small group counseling practice in Charlotte where I have some other you know, counselors there and, and doing that for a little while. And around 2017, started getting more active on social media. And then there was another push during the pandemic. And you know, here I am. Well, we're just honestly thrilled. Yeah, just a dude <laughs> with a couple of certs. No big deal. Just a dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, we're happy to have you here. Um, and it is kind of funny what you're talking about with like, it's a little surreal when people start to kind of recognize you in public for different reasons, because you are you are just a dude. And, and um, frankly, I was just in Charlotte over this past weekend where that happened with regard to the podcast the bartender over there said hey don't you have a podcast and I thought boy this is weird <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was kind of kind of bizarre but yeah I feel that and it's um it's it's kind of neat whenever you can kind of spread the wealth of knowledge outside of those one-on-one sessions and kind of share it with the masses in a way where hopefully you know even if you can just make a difference with one person that you know, you're not engaging with in a direct one-on-one manner like you would be in therapy, it, it's worth it. And so, mm. you know, for you to kind of relaunch your social media um, endeavors, so to speak, throughout the pandemic, my goodness, what a time uh, to be alive. I mean, gosh, it was needed and still is in a huge way. Yeah, that was, it, that was, it was pretty gnarly. And, and I think the, the mental health and emotional health arena 
has only continued to get more uh, gnarly, so to speak. And yeah. I mean, that's the trajectory that it's on. Um, and, I, and I would argue kind of has been since the early 2000s when we first started initially seeing those suicide rates beginning to peak and they, they haven't slowed down. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and um, you yeah, it's, know, it's, it's really cool to be doing everything and, and participating in, in, in what I've been doing that the people dig it. It was a, another interesting thing for me and just kind of leaned into it and it's turned into this other stuff, which is, is cool. I mean, to be honest, I would say the, the reason why I have found your content appealing um, is is for a couple of reasons. One is because you're a man. And I say this kind of like, I mean, I know that sounds kind of loosey, like, OK, what? But you're a man who has studied psychology and you're very open about the value in being vulnerable and how vulnerability can be a, a really key strength in the healing process. Um, sure. And and that's something that we don't typically see mm. coincide whenever we talk about men and men's health. Uh, we tend sure. to talk about all the elements of a hero's journey, but tend to leave out the strength that comes with vulnerability. Absolutely. I, th I think um, some old tenets of uh, Western culture, um, you know, around uh, the kind of bastardization of stoicism, from something that definitely the Greeks and Romans did not intend into more of just a synonym of emotional restriction, you know, idealizing this and seeing it as in stark contrast with rational uh, thinking and decision making um, has really gotten men into a lot of trouble and, and uh, all these other social and cultural expectations around you know you, you can't be seen as strong if you are expressing uncomfortable emotions because those are also seen as synonymous with weak you have all these contraindications that begin to intersect and stack up against um boys and men having space to learn how to integrate their full humanity um, yeah. to, to the point where it even starts to begin to be dangerous mm. uh, for, for the, the, so. them and, and people around them. Um, you know, in, in, in many ways, if you kind of look at the, the role of men um, you know, evolving with, with humanity and how that's complemented uh, women and, and, and you know, historically is you know, it's been our jobs men to um, be in the first line of defense and to uh, provide nourishment mm -hmm. primarily because if if you cannot risk women being killed or maimed if that happens like your your the whole family line dies mm -hmm. so what what ha like this is why men have more fast twitch muscle in their body just like anthropologically mm -hmm. speaking you know tend to and and can, with that comes a lot more uh, uh, responsibility. That's an enormous privilege, right? So they're kind of like the working dogs of the human species, right? We're like the, the yeah. Malinois, Dutch Shepherds, Wattweiler, Bulldog, cats, you know, what a like great there are some metaphor too. a great way to kind of, oh, right, yeah. right. Yeah. I like it. It works. And then it's like, if you have an animal like that, that's capable of that kind of intensity and you don't, and it, and it doesn't get taught how to manage pressure, Mm -hmm. Oh, you get this really like neurotic, fear aggressive <laughs> animal that is just a liability. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, you know, becomes dangerous quickly. I mean, I, I actually love that you're taking a moment to highlight that for a lot of different reasons, because it's just, it's not discussed um, and nor is it labeled in such a succinct way that is relatable for people to connect those dots. Uh, but to your point, you know, suicide rates at this point are unbelievably high in ways that I, I don't even, I don't think that as humanity, we can even fathom what is taking place right now ac across the collective. Um, and yeah. even when we think about, and I'm not here to politicize anything at all, but I'm saying in the context of like shootings and younger men getting, you know, that aggression, that anger and what we see kind of play out in today's society. Um, yeah, yes there are so many young men out there who you know there's a lot of huge feelings mm. yet there's nowhere to go with them 
They don't know yeah. what to do with them and where to go with them. And, you know, how do I retain my sense of identity, my masculinity, um, sure. while also having a safe space of being able to figure out what the hell is going on right now in, in my in my mind, in my heart, uh, where do I totally. belong and fit in? Totally. And at, at the end of the day, uh, the, the, the huge component of, of strength is flexibility. Mm. And, uh, Bruce Lee, uh, be like water, minimizing attachment to what we don't get to control relies on this. Um, even if you think about muscles, you know, um, if anyone has been, you know, an athlete or done strength conditioning, you've heard a coach say like long muscles, are strong muscles you know, at some point. <laughs> and it, it, that, um, and how many men are taught to be just like cold as ice, unbearing, rigid, dogmatic, persistent folks who cannot adjust to what they can't control yeah. and crack on themselves yeah in a huge way in yeah. a huge no, way you know, three and a half times more men likely to complete suicide than women and some of like 76 percent of women killed by guns are murdered by their male partner hmm. i believe that um in a lot of different ways i know that we we you don't know my story or anything like that but there is a reason why your content deeply resonates on a personal level um because i do believe that men need a space to figure out what is going on and how to channel it in a way that is safe so that it doesn't become dangerous and so that it doesn't get taken out on the rest of the people in their atmosphere um or you know sphere yeah. of influence so to speak um, and i'll say i'm going to interrupt just for a minute i think that this is important especially for parents listening, because as a parent who has both a male and a female child, have a boy and a girl, the content and um, information available to help my daughter manage her emotions far and wide. It exists in every platform. It is easy. It is colorful. Yeah. It is fun. Totally. For my totally. son, zilch. Yeah. Nothing. Don't be Nada. mistaken. None of this exists within a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So if you start looking around, like, this the, the and, and this is where the like the phrase a lot of men don't get the concept of male privilege mm. because to for Ooh. the same reason that a lot of white folks don't get the concept of white privilege yeah. because we can get into it yeah <laughs> let's go <laughs> but it, it's one of those things where like a lot of men are like well you know like I'm out there you know, with with bad knees and bad hips from you know placing roofs for decades by the time i'm 40 and i've got to retire like life is awful all these reasons and stuff like where is my like where have it's been easier for me where it's it is institutional design so it for a lot of men it doesn't actually benefit them very much directly it might benefit them in relation to women in a lot of spaces, but mm. everybody is screwed. Like everybody gets screwed. So it's it, it, it's not saying, you know, you have it worse and you have it better all the time. The, the, the system uses these ways of packaging and, and compartmentalizing people to encourage them to internalize that package and compartmentalize themselves and, mm. and, and devalue themselves yes. to the degree where they're, they're less than human. And it's, it's the patriarchy isn't good for anybody, <laughs> men, men included. Right. That's why the three and a half times, you know, suicide completion rate. Mm -hmm. So, and one of those is, is like, yeah, there's, there's not there's nearly enough um, education uh, around um, culturally conscious, um, like healthy masculinity, like mm. healthy boyhood. You know, it's just like, oh, just, you know, boys will be boys. Give them trucks, give them, give them them play guns. Just, you That's know, right. run them with G.I. Joe's right. and do what they do. And I just like, want to ah. give you all the snaps and claps. Yes. <laughs> like, but it, I mean, those, so like they need just as much mm -hmm. um, emotional and compassion, soft touch skills yes. as your little girls do. And they need to be in full contact sports to some degree so that they can start getting acclimated with their physical body and how mm -hmm. to control it and manage it under pressure and not do harm yes. to other people. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So they actually need more it. touch. 
need more touch. Like the, the, there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a faster reaction in the HPA axis for boys and men. They're actually more sensitive, just like a Belgian Malinois. It might not look like it with all the gnashing teeth and whatever, but like underneath of it, there's a human with a lot of chemical reactions going on. Yeah, you bet. You better believe it. And actually, you know, something I'd love to bring to awareness to our listeners is, is something that maybe a lot of people don't know about you, which is what you were doing in terms of your fields of work or what you were doing with at-risk youth um, in, in Appalachia uh, to, to learn, sure. like, what were you doing before you were officially a therapist, so to speak? Because I have a feeling this helped drive a lot of other things that came thereafter within your career. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went off the grid for a while. Um, Which I love. It was, yeah, cool. <laughs> it was not a popular a move. <laughs> yeah, I, it still I isn't. Think, it, it's, it's, I think it's because people are starting to pay a little bit more attention to it. It was the recession. It was like 2006, 2007. I finished undergraduate school at the University of Georgia and um Jobs were, you know, it was hard to find jobs and everyone was like, oh, you got to get the best position you can and chase and chase and, 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 and negotiate as much as you can. And I was just like, uh. <laughs> so first, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a hardcore alcoholic already and I'm, I'm realizing this. I'm 22 years old. Mm. So if I start doing that now, like, this isn't going to get better. Mm -hmm. So this, and, and this got to get figured out. And in second, um, like n n no, like I don't, I don't, I don't want to grow up yet either. So uh, <laughs> unsubscribe yes. to adulting. Got it. <laughs> yeah, no. So um, there was a, a it was taking this careers in psychology class, and um, one of the, the, the everyone came looking way too serious, looking like me now, and <laughs> one person came and presented with a Hawaiian shirt on and flip flops, and they were talking about basically living like like Paul Bunyan in the woods with at-risk youth and just having adventures. And I was like, that, that's what I'm doing. Like, that's oh, like sign that's me it. up, right? <laughs> so I do this, um, you know, at the time, like I like barely pass a drug test, right? And like, I was a mess. Um, and get into this space and start doing the training. And this was a super hardcore job. So this is like wilderness therapy and educational setting. Mm -hmm. um, kids would come down, either stepping down from youth detention centers, mm. um, which is like kind of where you end up after you keep going to juvie over and over yeah. again. And they're basically like, we're just going to hold on to you until we can put you with the adults. Mm -hmm. because, but you're like not, you're all like, you're a criminal already but like this isn't like slaps on the wrist isn't working anymore we need to house you until we can yeah. put you with the adults and not be you know um charged with liability for you being right. a minor around scary fast twitch muscle uh, men um as well as kids coming out of uh, psychiatric residential treatment facilities that are going up and down care and the foster system kids that are just really behaviorally disruptive mm -hmm. um so and, and now looking, like knowing what I know, like these were all kids that have complex trauma. Um, of course. All of them. Of course. Um, and every now and again, there was a pediatric or adolescent onset, um, you know, bipolar or, or schizophrenia type something going on. But that sure. was maybe like one in 30. Right. Know. It's so yeah. far and few, <laughs> although, you know, based yeah. off of what we would see on societies and we would think that it happens a lot more often, but more yeah. often than not, there's no. just a lot of complex. Really just learned, on. really just learned through, yeah, ob observation and being dysregulated uh -huh. and surviving. Mm. Yeah. So um, wouldn't work with these kids. And, and it's like uh, no electricity. You live in semi-permanent cabins that we would build with hand tools. You know, and you'd like uh, map them out on um, like uh, grid paper, like blueprints, and, like how... The, the dimensions everything needed to be and we had tools like you'd see like Amish folks had like we'd saw trees um, so cool. down and shave the bark off with you know the the oh um, I don't even know what you call these things and then we'd um, bathe the poles in bleach water um, and then cut them to length uh, dig you know big hole drop um, 
this you know log and and have like four logs sitting in the ground one part that had concrete involved they would come and pour concrete around you know the, the log so it would not like deteriorate within a few years and then you know the Take we would carve notches into the log. Like there were, there was no metal. No, it was all like drilled with like hand drills and dowel pegs and like. This is like next level, kind of... by the way. This is like next <laughs> level wilderness. Mind blown. Like <laughs> just, so. Like, my immediate question is: You, as an adult who is in charge of like taking care of barely. these children, what kind of training did you have to not assemble enough. a cabin? <laughs> not, not enough. enough. Not enough. I mean, very little. So we, we, um, so the, the training was you know, like, you were supposed to have a, a bachelor's degree in psychology or something related and, or a lot of experience. And so like people were <laughs> like conceptually, like you should know enough if you're there, mm. there's also an incredibly high turnover rate. So like the average lifespan of counselors was something like three months. Um, so they were kind of like, okay, if you can Can't take it why. and make it, maybe right and <laughs> it was we can get yeah, into that was, one too <laughs> it was definitely an acquired taste like any other super chaotic community mental health space um yeah. and and then so you also go through a process where you live in group as one of these kids for a, a month and and have a cohort and you get like tested and are going through the educational process and you're like living on the mountain around other groups, real groups too, and, and having to, and you have the same consequences and have same stuff and chores and, and, and whatever. So you know what it's like and, and you know, like what good ways to do it and bad ways to do it. Right. Wow. Um, so at least you have the experience of building one before you're in the position of building one. But also realistically, a lot of those kids have like chopped way more wood and built way more you, you had some like backwoods, rustic, talented work with their hands kiddos too. That was mm -hmm. super fun, man. Like, oh, I like, <laughs> I still remember probably like 20, 30 of these kids' names. Um, <laughs> so yeah, really uh, uh, loved this work. Did it for uh, about three years. Um, and uh, in, ended up, uh, meeting my wife there and um we went to, to portland um you know, fell in love with working with kiddos and decided you know, eventually saw uh, siblings coming through and older brother myself and you know that, that kind of protective charge was just like ah, like where are y'all coming from we need to figure out what bridge y'all are falling into the river with and start studying family therapy and so i'm doing mm. since it's amazing Oh gosh, I'm like covered in goosebumps. I know my, my, my tear ducts are producing. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. My eyes yeah, yeah. are getting a little wet. <laughs> oh yeah. gosh, I I love that you're sharing this for so many reasons, and and thank you, thank mm. you for choosing to dive into that because it, it's so yeah. evident how touching um, all of this has been in terms of like those those that part of your life seems to have been really pivotal in terms of. Mm. It, yeah. you know, really kind of put you on a reset, uh, like your own reset. But also, you know, I yeah. think this is something that in um, as mental health professionals or just in the space where you have clients, something that we don't tend to talk about nearly enough is how much our clients teach us just as much as we teach them, if not more sometimes. Absolutely. And how it's just, it's so beautiful to see that uh, whenever you can see someone flourish and I have a fill in whenever you were teaching these kiddos to chop wood, it was so much more than just chopping wood. Um, there, was, there was a lot going on. There was a lot going on. And, and, and even as you were talking about um, realizing that the people that we impact impact other people and how like just like this is the social media and being able to touch more folks, you know, it's, um, the, the, there are many kids that I worked with who were too far gone or too too involved in gang life to to leave or survive. Yeah. Um, but I saw their siblings coming up on family visits. I saw how they were coaching them. They weren't letting their getting letting them get banged in or whatever the, mm -hmm. the plan was before. Yeah. And you know who 
the, the people that you run into and that you touch that that packets in a lot of different directions too and i think yes. just how the the human mind processes information and the amount of attention that we that we give to what is scary or threatening it's easy mm -hmm. to look at um you know negativity and fear is contagious and have, having viral capability mm -hmm. but it, all other energy does too it just doesn't mm -hmm. um categorize that way to our neurotic uh, chimpanzee brain you know right yeah it's, <laughs> it's so yeah. true it's so yeah. true um I, and so i have a coaching business as well it's called conscious healers and it, it's all about the same a similar kind of mission of where we consciously heal each other and it's not just a a, a, a teacher and a student but we learn from one another and i'm really passionate about that and i can see that that's something that you've kind of the origin of your career started there as well, you know, um, and just yeah. even to hear like you met your wife there uh, is that's just beautiful on so many different levels. And I, I think even as we kind of move in that direction, speaking of love life, um, sure. you know, you have a really healthy relationship today from my understanding especially seeing your content where you educate so many people about not just red flags but green flags um how did you get to that space of oh god making so many mistakes the green flags yeah. Make it, yes. it, was, it was an accident it was an accident i feel that in my heart yeah and soul. <laughs> yeah totally it was an i i used to um be just fascinated with really shiny chaotic women i feel that too but with men and like my yeah right like <laughs> and if i was in a men, it would have been shiny chaotic men yeah, i tell you red um, flags were carnivals <laughs> it's, it's an invitation home you know it's a, <laughs> and and like the the, the I remember the last, I mean, relationship after relationship, it, it, it was, was like this. And it eventually started working in the woods and I got sober, um, started doing my own therapy work. Um, it started being on my own two feet mm -hmm. more predictably. And um, I, I saw a woman briefly uh, who was like, it was like, gosh, I'm like doing this thing again, but I'm observing myself doing it. And I don't want to do that and stopped mm. dating for a little while and uh, had a very deep friendship with a woman I ended up marrying. Uh, we ended up agreeing to marry me as, as a, I marry her. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> manly man, you. <laughs> uh, um, and, <laughs> and, uh, so it, what ended up happening, like I, I, so I discovered something really cool on a therapeutic level and like, she saw it and, and I think, and I think her seeing, like seeing that was a moment where she was like, oh my God, like this guy is really interesting. Um, and, and, and it was like an experience for me too. Um, and then after that, like eventually she had a romantic relationship that ended and then we started going on dates and just kind of like hanging out more and it became, you know, more romantic, but we're, we're definitely um, like, we're married, <laughs> we have family, we have kids, and we, <laughs> like, kids and we have, but we're definitely like really good friends and yeah. super, so, and um, like finish each other's sentences annoyingly at times or be like <laughs> thinking the same stupid little like theme song or like riff or something. And like, we're incredibly platonically connected too. Yeah, um, and it's amazing. just super easy, super seamless. And, you know, we like deal with tension really directly and really vulnerably. Um, and it's just really cool to, to be able to experience that, um, especially as a couples therapist. I see so many different versions of high functioning to low functioning and everywhere along the way. Um, and it's, you know, it's cool, cool, cool to know that you're doing some things, right? You know? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Why... And... Oh, I'm sorry. Lindsay, go, ahead. go ahead. It's okay, Amber. Go ahead. I was just going to say, we were talking a little bit earlier about how Lindsay kind of was attracted to your content. And one of the things that really caught my attention 
is your emphasis on all of the positive aspects and your emphasis on looking for green flags and recognizing those and just calling out that, um, what it looks like to feel safe and be safe and be in an intimate relationship. Um, and just, it's something that's not shared often enough, I think, especially on social media, but even in conversations with friends, you know, you find yourself very quick to identify red flags, identify things that aren't working, identify complaints and grievances. Yeah. And it's much more challenging and happens less often where we say, oh my gosh, my partner did this thing. And it was like the biggest, um, smallest, wonderful thing that day. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't have to be the totally. grand gesture of totally. the $10,000 diamond, but like, you Which know, small flag. things around the house. Yeah. Touche. Awesome response. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Why, yes. why the hell did you give me this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is yes. this? Yes. Well, also on that note, I would say, you know, as, as Brene Brown has famously said, clear is kind mm. and you are such a direct communicator and a kind communicator. And I feel that oftentimes we have confused in our society. We, we don't think the two can coexist. We think that to yeah. be direct means that you must be very oh, aggressive. Good, <laughs> you gotta be blunt. I I'm that. not mean, I'm blunt. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, wait they're, a minute. They're, uh, they're really narrowly understood. And mm. I, and I think they, they, they really intersect with each other they, and, and really they correlate do. with each other. Like the, the more, uh, compassionate you can be, the more clear you can be. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and the more clear you can be, the easier it is to stay compassionate and non-reactive. And, and the more compassionate you want to be, the more open people want to be to receive whatever you're sharing. Exactly. They have permission to be clear. It's and there's, and there's, safety. there's safety with there's, being clear. <laughs> there is it's like um and I talk about dogs a lot I'm a dog nerd but like I love it's dogs this, um, cool <laughs> cool there's um and I like this Cesar Milan character he's totally a, a character almost like a caricature of himself yes. <laughs> like how he talks about the concept of calm assertive like that's that's the sauce mm. that's it it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that mm -hmm. um like that, that is an incredibly strong, high vibe, however you want to think about it. And they're like, that's the power of love as opposed to the love of power. Um, now, and, and, and this is really important because, you know, when we talk about like being clear, being kind, how they get misunderstood with each other, it, was, it starts incorporating the concept of boundaries mm. is you, a lot of people when they're talking about being kind, they're not actually being kind. They're like being hyper vigilant about making other people upset mm -hmm. and in doing so, taking more responsibility for regulating that person <laughs> than they're willing to regulate themselves and helping them maintain a level of denial about their BS. And that's not very we'll kind that to again. them. <laughs> that's not very kind to you. Like kindness should be empowering. It's about what helps everybody access grace and stay yeah. in their light. I didn't know we were going to church today, Logan. Man, Shoo. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Yes. Okay. I, yes, absolutely. I'm loving it. I'm loving it because honestly, it is it is the darn truth. And we have mm -hmm. to be, we, we need to get more honest with ourselves about the fact that yeah. when we are being direct and we're stating our needs or we're communicating when something is uncomfortable or not okay, you know, our communication 101 is there's a sender of the communication and there is a receiver of the communication. And it yeah. is not the sender's job to control what the receiver does with the information. Um, we get really lost in that. And I think, you know, obviously a lot of this can tie back, uh, to family of origin components mm. and what was modeled to you, what you learned. Um, I can only imagine your, what you've seen, um, as someone who's worked with couples as well for as long as you have, um, by all yeah. means, but something I love that you have highlighted, um, in, um, in different forms of your content is the fact that no response is a response. And when people show you who they are, believe them. 
Mm. Believe them. Don't fill in the gaps with your own narratives or wishful thinking. People show yeah. you exactly who they are. Um, and if you continue to be irritated by the person's behavior and yet stick around for that, like that's also that's on you. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's that's where pain becomes suffering. Like, right? It's mm. like the all all pain is supposed to be at the end of the day is a, a, a alarm signal. It's just supposed to be information. It's supposed to be a teacher. But at, when, when we're fighting its lessons, at, at those points, we're participating in our own suffering. And we, you know, we can talk about it on a big macro level or a tiny little micro level. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen research around this, um, uh, hooking up um, nuns and Buddhist monks to uh, fMRI um, imaging functional magnetic uh, resonance imaging and looking at their their brain waves mm -hmm. and exposing them to uh, I don't know exactly what it's called it's this nasty little bugger that you're not going to want to participate with when you hear it <laughs> basically like puts an electrode on you and it zaps you intermittently oh. like a little like e-collar type thing like zaps you um like every you know 30 seconds or a minute right so what, what they find with people that have a lot of experience with meditation which is the same as prayer in your brain, which is mm -hmm. the same as mindfulness, Absolutely. which is the same as your five times called a prayer to Allah, or however you attune yourself to the cosmos yeah. and ground yourself in, into that, whatever that is for you. The more that you have practiced doing this, they found that these folks, these, these monks and these nuns, compared to general population, um, would only their, their cortisol and adrenaline would only spike momentarily while the electrode was going and over time it even started to be less and less general population theirs was staying spiked the whole effing yeah time. i was i was gonna and, say and starting uh, to go higher high baseline. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah people were starting to panic and get stuck in scarcity and expecting it and uh, racing and, the, and it was yeah. getting Right, and, and this is a perfect example of the difference between the application of pain, how we participate in our own suffering. Yes, because we are a change agent. We can show up in our own lives and choose to make a difference. And I think that's yeah. another piece that gets you know lost on us is the fact that we actually have a choice on how we want to show up for ourselves and our lives. And then life is not just happening at us. We are a part of our lives. Mm -hmm. and and yeah. to your point, you know, we are mirrors. And if we're not learning that universe is less than the first time, you better believe it's going to show itself again and again and again until it clicks. <laughs> it's, the beauty, it's the beauty of the compulsion to repeat. I think that's the um, that's the beauty of it is uh, it, it will make sure that the trials and tribulations of life give you exactly what you need. And because it, it, it's got this compulsion to work through these dynamics and it's going to throw this very consistent survival response when when you run into stress you know and, and until you're you're willing to give yourself permission to to work through that differently and learn how to be who you needed when you were younger but it's um i think in, until people get people hear i think some of the phrases that you tend to hear thrown around and like over time there are just certain are like non-dualistic truths that just kind of are that mm -hmm. that start like referencing but that all have um a, a more significant internal locus of control built into them you know it's like oh yeah like you can learn how to be good so people who are before kind of pretty like even pre-contemplative or um you know maybe like just starting their treatment work and really running mm -hmm. into a hard time just the i like the idea that you can have that much more control mm -hmm. in your day to day and in, in, in your destiny or how that plays out over the fourth dimension just over, over the course of time is such a mind F to people. <laughs> like, so like when in, in the comment sections, when you, when I'm talking about like healing stuff and you see people comment with like, how with like all caps and all, all yes. that's what you're seeing is yeah. people yeah. who are in like in those earlier phases who are operating with core beliefs that are wrapped up in an external mm -hmm. locus uh, of control and scarcity and just projecting that onto the space. It's like, well, I'm like literally talking about how, like right here, 
Yes. And you're not you're hearing like, it. Slow down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. That's something I say all the time. I say, yeah. focus on your locus, focus on your locus. It is all yeah. about focusing on your locus of control. Like you do have a sense of agency and, and to your point, right? Like your journey, you weren't always like this. You kind of had to go through hell to get, you know, to get through the other side. Um, yeah. you know, so without focusing all the energy on the hell side of things, what in the world do you do to kind of keep yourself grounded? Um, yeah. now, like what do, what do some of your daily practices look like, feel like where, um, I would say in an unconventional way for you to be a therapist who is so open about kind of like the spiritual attunement aspect of things. Um, like I hear sure. you talk about mind, body, and spirit, uh, sure. which are all very deeply, um, it deeply resonates with me as a therapist, but I feel kind of on the societal front, um, therapists kind of have, sh have kind of like strayed away from addressing that whole spirit piece, mm, but sure. that whole meditation and, and, and whatever you do to get grounded is also a huge part, like those things connect. So what does that look like for you? Yeah. Um, I mean, as far as my day-to-day -day practice, and uh, like weekly, pra I can rattle off like a bunch of stuff that I do, but it, each each of those things, I learned that they were relevant going through some really wonky stuff. And like, you know, like they, they were all pain to passion projects. So like how, how I'd like learned to prioritize them where none of them are pretty stories. Um, but <laughs> I, I, I don't drink, like period. Um, let's see, uh, have a really clean diet. Like it just, like, I, I don't, um, don't eat gluten, uh, dairy, soy, sesame. Like you should eat a lot of like rice, brown rice, chicken, fish, some beef, tons of vegetables for like 80% plant-based um, like really non-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. diet. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I do uh, heavy strength training six days a week. I had some like lower back and, and hip issues that were really problematic like a, about a year ago actually mm -hmm. and like rediscovered heavy compound movements and like the importance of this and, and like recovering functionally. But then also it was like, oh yeah, this is why I fell in love with the gym as a teenager. Yeah. I'm going like, to keep doing this. And this is awesome. I want to pick um, heavy shit up and then put it back down. It makes us feel better. This is <laughs> music to Amber's ear. She's a health coach, yeah. by the way. I mean, nice. like, I don't know if you know this, but she's nice. a health coach. And this is okay. like, I can just see her kind of like, yes. There's, like, yes, there's yes, all yes, kinds yes. of like epigenetic <laughs> stuff that starts happening when you take a very anti-inflammatory uh, uh, approach holistically. Um, and for a, and a polyvagal lens and a gut health yes. lens and a, like it just through and through um, Ayurvedic medicine been talking about it for thousands of years for many, many different reasons. Um, and, and that's kind of how I'm going to live my life. I go to bed pretty early, usually about like 1030. Of, um, you geese are either, you. <laughs> you, know, you said I, early I, and then you said 1030 and you lost me, friend, because like <laughs> nine o'clock Amber turns into a pumpkin. There you go. There you go. And, and in times where I'm waking up super early, I'll go to bed at about nine. And uh, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. I uh, prioritize time for playing music. Um, mm. I uh, spend time with, with friends, uh, uh, you know, tell my buddies, I love them. Uh, Can we just pause on yeah. that for a second? You tell sure. your buddies, you love them. Oh yeah. I yeah. love that you're saying this. Sure. Why? Because it's not said enough. Um, yeah. And I, and I, and I tear up because, um, you know, again, like I, I learned to be that much more gracious about my buddies that are alive mm. after learning that losing friends to suicide and overdoses, right? Like that's why I started getting more active in social media in 2017. I news that a sixth childhood friend died from an overdose. Mm. 
um, I was a wild kid. And, you know, like we, there was a trajectory that we were on and statistically most of us don't get off of it. Um, I get that actually and <laughs> a lot. Yeah. I was, I'm I was the female good. version of that. Rock and roll, dude. <laughs> do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but like the, and, and I think especially men were, um, so encouraged to beat the provider drum once we get into adulthood and really discouraged from making time to connect and, mm -hmm. and, and fulfill love and belonging needs, um, in, in other platonic relationships, which isn't good for us or our partners, because that's that right. like, if like, if that isn't diversified, that's way too much pressure on our romantic partner than being like everything to us, like slow down to like everybody needs, it takes a village for yeah. everything. We need um, connection. We need community. Yeah. 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 We over yeah. index Actually, and we say it takes a village to raise a child, but it takes a village to support the parent and the adult and the human it's just an beyond allegory. just, yeah, yeah, it's not, <laughs> we're all it's not just about the kids. We're all children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And I think um, I want to share this because I'm seeing so many um, similarities between the two of you. Obviously, you both have um, coaching businesses that were born out of you know your own inner experience in life and using that to help and connect and teach and learn and grow. Um, I feel like Logan, when we we're kind of um, starting off the conversation. You have some online resources for. Um, I think more the male demographic of um, the human population. And I want to sure. make sure that we have space to share about that because I do think that that's hugely needed and it's something that we need to um, have, call attention to. And yeah. another bullet point with that is if you can kind of outline and share a little bit about like what the difference is between coaching and therapy. Mm -hmm. I think that's totally. another important piece with that as well. Yeah. So, it, I mean, I guess like first, I would say that's a, that, that's a more kind of delineated one can describe pretty straightforward way. Um, therapy is uh, going to be a focus on the mental health symptoms that you're having with the, the goals being to get resolution around your mental health symptoms. Mm. And or, or to manage your mental health diagnosis. Yeah. And really, from, from where it comes from, it was kind of funky. The, 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 the healthcare world <laughs> looks at diagnoses as pathologic, as like chronic chemical imbalances. So mm -hmm. then like the, the job of therapists, unfortunately, unless people are, are trained in more progressive schools becomes like, let me help you accept that you have something chronically wrong with you and mm. that you just have to like walk with the cane for the rest of your life and ex just deal with it. Yeah. Like be Symptom a wallflower. Management. Yeah. Which like sucks, but it, it doesn't have to be like that. Like find more forward thinking clinicians. They're out there. We're out there. Totally. Um, coaching is, is, is much more, um, much more open and much more directed by the client and whatever outcomes they want to get in, in their own life and then helping them increase their motivation for and maintain the skills required for sustaining those goals in the long term. Yes. Thank you. I guess that'd be a shorthand that. answer to that. I love that. No, I appreciate that Perfect. because this is something that I, okay. I bring to, I, I discuss that a lot here in different episodes about the differences. Um, mm -hmm. But I appreciate having another therapist highlight this <laughs> because yeah. I do think that it can be a confusing piece, but through mm -hmm. coaching, I do believe it opens up that realm to address the mind, body, and spirit. It addresses the yeah. realm to look at other pieces where it's, this is not a clinical intervention for a clinical mental health diagnosis. It's very different in the coaching space mm -hmm. and um, creates more room in a lot of different ways um, that we don't really have, I think, as therapists. And that's just my opinion, I would say. Yeah. Um, that, that that we're not taught to do in 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 more standard professional settings certainly like a, yes. and that, a lot of you got to run into 
interesting think outside the box therapists that are going to operate in those ways too. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and again, we're out there, but it's not, mm-hmm. not common. Right. <laughs> so, and not hard to find. accepted in the Western <laughs> world yet. <laughs> totally. Um, we're, we're, we're on a movement here, but um, yeah. so with that, tell us a little bit about the coaching business that you have. So the, the coaching business that I have, like the one-on-one work, one on one work that I do with people, I work, I, I work with, with all folks in all uh, human meat suits, like you're human. That's cool. Um, men, <laughs> women, <laughs> non-binary, whatever. People um, who have heartbeats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Now, when I created, there's a a very specific curriculum that I created called the Balanced Man Plan that I uh, designed, well, really around 2017, when I started being more active on social media, I I also started researching, being like, why the hell are my friends keep dying? Like, what's going on? Mm, And I I came to what I discovered the, the answers were are these underpinnings, these social and cultural expectations for gender expectations, the traditional gender expectations mm-hmm. for men, and how there are these main points that really contraindicate integration of full humanity. Um, and kind of you know mapped out all these areas of requirements for healthy, you know, balanced living as a human being, and then how they intersect Mm -hmm. with those expectations and create issues, and then create a curriculum uh, specifically for men that are um, gun shy about going and talking to a professional in person, either, you know, their own shame or embarrassment or not knowing or whatever, um, and just having a place to begin that starts introducing Mm -hmm. like, these are the needs of humans. Mm -hmm. This is how we're taught to do this stuff as men. This is where it has been helpful throughout history and why we've learned to do it this way. But this is how at this point in human development after the Neolithic revolution and in modern society in the industrial age, where it's really contraindicated and how we can reintegrate this stuff like pre-Neolithic that we were definitely doing because we evolved to do. And, 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 and the, 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 it's the reason that there's all this stuff lined up in this way. And, and this is how you reclaim those software updates. And w- with it being enough for folks to feel comfortable enough and destigmatized enough to get in the room with somebody because realistically you're like folks are going to run into areas where like i just have all the feels and i don't yeah. know what they are and this information isn't even enough but at, the, at that point you will know that all your feels are human they're not a sign of you being like a weak stupid um you know lame whatever and and that it's time to go um, yes. honor your humanity mm. Logan, thank you so much for the work that you're doing. I just, I say this from the bottom of my heart um, for so many different reasons, but thank you. I just, I can't help but to want to completely cry. <laughs> um, so I lost a, a colleague of mine who was a therapist to suicide within this past year. I'm and sorry. I also, um, thank you. And I also lost a friend of mine who I'd known forever um, to an overdose a couple months ago. And um, so to your point, I really do understand um, that this is an epidemic among men. Um, It it is an epidemic for many, but I will say that I feel that there's a lot of men that just don't, they don't know where to go and they don't know where to start. And therapy no, feels don't. really intimidating. Can um, be, yeah, it is. It is, you know? and it, and it's a, it's a cry and shame because that 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 whole issue being the issue as it is is a shame in and of itself. Not to be mm. ashamed of the issue is a shame because yes. you know just like um, so hu- human beings are a little special compared <laughs> to the rest of the animals. We have this weird, highly egocentric yet high horsepower processing thing <laughs> that that helps us uh-huh. like rise to the top of the food chain in a mm. so quickly and pervasively through all yeah. parts of the world mm-hmm. where like our next closest ancestors are getting taken out one-on-one by chimpanzees like it doesn't even make sense um 
we're, we're supposed to be the shepherd guardians of the earth. Mm. Like that's what that's about. Yeah. Like that's, that's why all the theologies get down to servant leadership. Like we, mm-hmm. we, we are kind of special. And with that privilege comes an enormous amount of responsibility and, yeah. and fellas, men, like y'all are kind of special. Like y'all, you, you've been like pr- primarily hunters and warriors for hundreds of thousands of years. We can't create life, but we can do all kinds of other cool stuff. <laughs> and that's, and, and, and it's, it's been our job to be servant leaders for our communities since the mm. beginning. That's, that's what's made yin and yang complement and, and continue working these, these parts of yourself that come with all of these chemical reactions that are so confusing that you don't have language for yeah. that have been conditioned to shame and fear and, mm-hmm. and avoidance and repression. That's all there. So, so, so you can look out for yourself and the people that you love. And if, if you're not able to, or you don't know how that works or, or you're confused about it, just know that it doesn't have to be that way. And, and it hasn't, it, it wasn't that way for hundreds and thousands of years. And, and you haven't taught yourself to do it that way, but you can learn how to do it differently. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I would love to steer our listeners to the direction of where to find you. And so that for especially the men who are listening, you know, it sounds, and I think you've made it very clear in today's episode, you are a very safe person to connect with. And as a man, you, you do understand, and you have been through your own lived experiences. How can the listeners who want to get in touch with you, how can they do that in a private way? Do you have a website that you'd like to share or anything like that? Yeah. You you can just go to logancohen.com and see some stuff about me there. If you're curious specifically about the balanced man plan, you can go to balancedmanplan.com and look at that stuff. Excuse me. Um, But you know, logancohen.com also does it Um, also on social media and those few places where you can see, content and you know talking head stuff um yeah with nearly yeah. <laughs> two million followers by the way y'all in case you haven't looked at his stuff that kind of blew me away i was like holy cow, absolutely blew up <laughs> yeah no, it did. i've got a seven-year-old right now, like recently he was like dad are, someone said you have like <laughs> like a thousand thousand followers yeah. and i was like i <laughs> So, uh, I, I do, I have a lot, of, but I want you to know that like, <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't the plan. There's nothing we're doing. Like I don't spend <laughs> a lot. Of, I was like, listen, yeah. you will not idealize this. Oh. Um, <laughs> it, it's like trying as much as a bit like socially and culturally it is. So I'm just trying Impossible. to do my, yeah. my, my level of explanation to demystify it and make it clear that I don't think it's like the bees knees or whatever, but I'm, I'm, right. I'm honored that people have resonated with it. And, um, uh, humbly appreciate participating in it. Yeah, yeah. it really yeah, speaks to your relatability. I mean, you just your content is wonderful. It's easy easy to digest, easy to put into action. So I'm not at all surprised that so many people are just like uh, tagging along for the information. It's true, and also just the fact that um, I would say something that stands out to me and that I appreciate is that you create time to kind of show aspects of your quirkiness in terms of celebrating or dancing or snapping or whatever. And I kind of think that that's cool because it's also really relatable to just us as people. And I think, you know, getting out of our heads as being therapists who have to appear professional and in a certain kind of a attire every day. Um, we're humans first. <laughs> and I think yeah. that that is important for people to see the power of humanity, the power mm. of human connection comes first. Um, so thank you for normalizing human experiences across the board. We need more people like that and good people need to stick together. So we appreciate your time, your energy and just sharing with us today. It's been lovely to have you on. Ah, thanks for letting me intersect with you and and laugh a little bit and cry a little bit and get charged up a little bit and that's, <laughs> yeah, that's what bit. we do on what the fox listen yeah. we have a little joke on what the fox that it's very rare for a guest speaker to join us and someone not cry during the episode so it's you continued true. our streak 
Um, we are grateful for that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for helping us. Keep I cry that every time. Alive. <laughs> I, um, hey, listen, life is hard. And, you know, sometimes we just, we just got to let, let stuff flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let it flow. Absolutely. No judgment here. I think I really enjoyed this conversation. We took a lot of twists and turns. We covered a lot of ground. And I think to be honest, we could probably do six more episodes with you and still not cover everything that Lindsay and I wanted to talk to you about. Um, so we will gladly welcome you back for a repeat episode. Yeah, maybe um, season three. <laughs> season three, yep. Um, and just want to kind of close us out today and just say thank you. You know, thank you for the folks Truly. who follow along with us. Thank you to our sponsors, both Therapy Appointment and Conscious Healers. Thank you to the guest speakers who join us and take their time and um, really pour into us the podcast and our followers um, and just feeling super grateful today. So wanted to totally. Share that with <laughs> and you guys, we are actually on YouTube now. So that's something that's kind of shifted around. So feel free to check us out. If you want to go to youtube.com at what the Fox podcast, you can check us out there. And of course, whatever podcast platform you prefer, that's also going to work. And until next time, we will see you next Tuesday. Bye guys. Bye y'all. And we all say everything is going to be just fine. It's gonna fall into place The sun is gonna set on your terrible day